Hey everybody, uh, I'm going to try and make this not look like a uh, forced government apology video or like a hostage situation here, but um, <laughs> I'm in front of a nondescript black curtain, so it's probably off to a bad start. A lot of you have wanted me to talk about my thoughts around Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, the game so far. I do not want to give spoilers to this game. Now, I know some people are going to say like, well, Jay, when the stuff around The Last of Us 2 came out, you talked about that, and Jay, when... When, you know, WB was kind of, uh, in my opinion, lying about Gotham Knights and their story direction. You talked about that. And I get that. Um, I'd like to say that I take things situationally. And sometimes I try and learn from things I do. Like a lot of you liked when I talked about The Last of Us. A lot of you didn't like when I talked about Gotham Knights the way I did. Uh, and while I'm not just using my peach to a, a speech to appease everybody, I try and handle things differently on a case-by-case -case basis. With Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League... Whether you think this game looks amazing or not, this is a game that is taking place in a universe that a lot of people care about. The universe this takes place in is what caused my marriage. Uh, my wife found my Batman videos, um, and that's how we ended up meeting. It's a universe that really matters to me. It's a universe that made a lot of you find this channel. And it's a universe that I've had mixed feelings on, which I'll, I'll discuss a little bit too. I personally have started playing the game. I've started playing Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I'm about three and a half hours in, I would say. And I've seen some people already beat the game. I've seen them beat it in eight to ten hours, uh, just kind of pushing through the main story. It's not a super long game, but there is going to be a lot more content added. That said, a scene did leak yesterday, um, or should I say was released, because the game is now officially out. It's not really a leak anymore, uh, regarding character deaths. Now, I'm not going to tell you who that is, I'm not going to get into the specifics of that, um, but there's a lot of concern around how this game handles the entire Justice League. There's a lot of concern around how it handles Flash, Jon Stewart's Green Lantern, how it handles Batman, especially because that's in this universe. And originally I made this video and I read through a bunch of tweets that I made and I just didn't think it was very good. I felt like it was wishy-washy, non-committal. Um, maybe I will upload that full take to Patreon uh, I don't know, it's like 30 minutes, um, but basically, I didn't really feel happy with that video, that's why I'm redoing this. Now, people wanted me to look at this, and a lot of people are very angry, and I think rightfully so, like, there is no problem with caring about this universe, there's no problem with being passionate, Nate's in the background, Nate, you can sit down, this is not like a professional video, okay. say hi to everybody, Hello. Nate's in the background, I had him over here today, um, I get why people are upset. And I want to tell you right now that I am also upset. Now, the people who love this game are going to immediately latch onto that statement. And they're going to say like, oh, well, this is a hater. This is somebody who like just didn't want to give the game a chance. They hate it. Actually, no, I plan to play through it twice. I'm playing through it on my own right now. And then I'm going to let's play it with Nate, I believe, starting on Friday. Probably start uploading on Saturday. Uh, because a lot of you care about this universe. You want to see it. And I want to give it a chance. That said... There is a lot of concern, and I think it is justified. I think that people who are mad right now have a right to be mad. And this is something I talked about the other day. There's two things, two layers to this brief conversation. The first off is that there are things being released on Twitter and other places, which I can't get too far into, because some of the people leaking them and releasing these unused voice lines that appear to be from future content those people are doing that and they're not getting in trouble. But anytime I've seen it come up on YouTube, I've seen a lot of people get in trouble for it. There are a lot of hints in the future that what is happening right now is not the end of the story. And I think that we knew that already because this is a live service type release where you have different seasons, you have different playable characters, you have Elseworlds, and you have more stories being added on to this. This whole video is not a defense of the game or a condemnation. It's just trying to talk about the situation. These deaths that people are concerned about, these these things that are making people upset, they make me upset too. I will tell you why, but I also don't necessarily think this is the end of the story. I've tried to say before that I want to take a little bit of a wait-and-see approach to this universe to see what happens. Um, at the end of the day, if this game all the way through, you know, like I'm three and a half, four hours in, uh, and all of its DLC content sucks, it disrespects the Justice League, uh, it just kind of like pisses on your heroes and that's it, well, then I don't need to care about it anymore. Like, I don't need to declare it not canon, but I just don't need to care. Like, it just doesn't need to affect me. 
this game does not need to ruin your childhood memories, okay? This game does not need to ruin the Batman Arkham series for you. It does not need to ruin, like, the other versions of these characters you like, like the DCAU or the DCAMU or the DCEU or whatever, or the comics. This game is itself. But as itself, it is also connected to this overall universe. And people are upset because when they're seeing these characters be treated in ways that even though they fit the villains that are doing these actions, they see these characters and these heroes that they like basically being disrespected, they feel, by writers. I think that that's the problem. I think there's a lot of disingenuous arguments around this game. I've seen a lot of people online say, well, you know, how can you complain about, like, this thing when clearly villains would do that? They'd do this bad thing. And I don't think anyone really disagrees with that. I haven't really seen anybody be like, Harley Quinn would never hit someone in the face with her bat. Yeah, clearly it's a bad thing Harley Quinn would do. But it's also about execution, right? Like, if you want a character to die in Avengers Endgame, regardless of how you feel about the movie, I feel like the character deaths mostly, especially around Iron Man, which is obviously a spoiler everyone knows at this point, were done respectfully, right? They were done in a way that venerated that hero. Like, it didn't deify them, but it kind of took that hero, it gave them an inspirational send-off. And I think my problem with Suicide Squad so far playing the game and I think the problem a lot of people are having around this is that there's so many stories now that are told that are not inspiring. They are stories that don't really lift anybody up. And not everything has to have a happy ending. I think my favorite movie ever, um, which I have up on my shelf somewhere, is Blade Runner. Um, it, it's probably my favorite movie. If not in my top five, it is my favorite. And it certainly does not have a happy ending. It's certainly not a happy movie. But it's very inspirational. It still makes you think. It's still you know, digs deeper and, and and causes something to stir in you um, if you connect with the movie. I think that's what good literature does. And I don't want to be credentialist, but I have a degree in literature. I'm somebody who went to school for storytelling and for teaching storytelling. And it frustrates me to see so many stories around characters like this, around superheroes and these comic book characters especially, that were originally designed to lift people up and inspire them, that now they seem to feel like they are constantly trying to make amends for the past, or they're constantly trying to tell you, like, hey, in real life, there's no such thing as superheroes. Like, your superheroes won't always save the day. Their moral code won't always work. But this is escapism. I don't think a lot of people really want that. A lot of people want to see their heroes and they want to be inspired. And even if there's character decisions they disagree with, or even if there are deaths, they want those to feel earned like they matter, and like they serve a purpose. A lot of people are rightfully upset about this game and about its story, which I've said several times, and this game has become not fun to talk about. I'm still releasing a Is It Worth Buying uh, that I am making for tomorrow, because overall I like the gameplay of this game, I do like the cosmetics, there is stuff I like about the story a lot, but I don't think that this narrative going around that everybody who's frustrated with the game is a hater is fair. Um, it feels very revisionist history to me to act that way. Because you'll have scenes in the in the trailer, which I, I just got through this scene right now, uh, where, like, Harley Quinn is shown her old outfit from Markham Knight, and she, like, slams the locker in disgust. I can't find it now either, uh, but there was a quote when this game was being developed, and it was talking about how Rocksteady was, like, taking into account um, female input on costume design this time around and stuff. And I'm having a hard time finding it. So if you find it, um, I would love it if you'd share the actual quote in the comments down below. But it kind of, parts of this game are, I think, really rubbing people the wrong way. I hate the term, get woke, go broke. But like when you see all of these things lined up in a row, like you see, hey, your childhood heroes are the bad guys and we have to like slaughter them. We have to get rid of them. And then you turn the corner, and this is not an insult to, like, my gay viewers or anything like that. Like, I have a actually pretty large percentage of people who watch this channel who are, like, trans um, or bi or gay. My wife is bi. It's not an insult to them. But, like, when you see that kind of thing, right, and then you see some of the companies connected to the story writing around Rocksteady, and you see the people, like, the co-founders leaving Rocksteady prior to this game launching, and then you see that this is going to be one of the last appearances of Kevin Conroy, um, like his Batman, and you see like the scene in question I'm talking about that was 
posted online the other day around that that to a lot of people felt very disrespectful to that version of the character not from the villains but from the writers um and then you round a corner in the hall of justice and you like see a pride flag or you go out into the world and like harley quinn has to you know not show too much skin like we have to tone that back because like now you know that that's not a, a good look um there's a lot of stuff in this game that feels like it's pandery that I'm frustrated with. There's a lot of stuff where it feels like they wanted to have their cake and eat it too. Like they wanted to put in little tidbits that venerated the games that came before it. But they also wanted to say like, we don't want to work on those anymore. Almost. And and I don't know how to feel about that. Like there's all this information coming out that, you know, maybe the league will come back. That there will be more with them. That a lot of things aren't what they seem. Um, that, you know, future content will update that. And my problem is, like, I have, I have two feelings about that. The first off is when Batman Arkham Knight came out, it neglected a lot of side, you know, villains and missions, um, even things like, like, uh, Mr. Freeze. He was not really in the game. He didn't really matter. His storyline just kind of dropped off after City. And if the game was left there, I think a lot of people would have been really disappointed with the treatment of Mr. Freeze, right? But then you know, the season of infamy came out and they mostly addressed that. That's what I mean when I say wait and see. I want to see what the future holds for this universe, what happens in the future, not because I have absolute faith in WB or anything like that, but because I have a hard time believing with everything we know about Kevin Conroy, with everything we know about his health having declined and all that stuff, that he would take a role that he thought disrespected Batman, that he would take a role that he thought robbed people of hope. I just have a hard time believing that about that man. Not because I trust WB, not because I even trust Rocksteady. I, I really don't. Because a lot of the people at Rocksteady who I liked left. Uh, it's just, it's a company with the same name and a lot of different people. But because I, I really, really like Kevin Conroy. Um, I never got a chance to meet him. T did. I wish I did. Um, but T met him a few years before his passing at a comic convention. I don't remember where, I think it was in Minnesota, but I'd have to ask him. And, you know, he talked to him a little bit, not, not a lot. And he's a very kind man. And I've been shown, you know, I think they were cameos, like the website cameo. Um, my friend Seth got a cameo from Kevin Conroy, where he talked to him pretty deeply about some stuff I thought was really interesting. Um, Kevin Conroy talked a lot about his struggles as like a gay man in Hollywood and in the workplace and I know nowadays people probably look at that and say like, oh, well, it's, it's a different atmosphere. Maybe I'm not there. Um, but like when he was, um, you know, working in his younger years, like being called slurs and stuff for who he was and how he connected with Batman, because like it was the idea of someone rising above um, their past, rising above parts of themselves um, to become more right to like, you know, be a, a shining beacon, like even if they have, um, baggage like they have bullying problems or they have you know trauma or any of this stuff like it's it's very interesting how he talked about that character how that character connected with him and then how he made that character connect with all of us i don't know the exact quote but at one point he talked about how um he felt like his whole life he was hiding and then you know like putting on a mask and pretending to be someone else and then when he started playing batman it really clicked with him you know like that character like how people can feel like they're not really themselves and like how they have to be someone else, any of these things. And when I see a guy like that, who respected this character so much, even if there are a few times where there was a couple clunkers, not his fault, but the, the script, like the Killing Joke movie, um, Lil Ruff, or the CW appearance, Lil Ruff, not his fault, but the script. When I see that, I'm having a hard time believing that that man would, when he loves this character so much, when he clearly cared about his fans so much and the people who connected with this character, that he would take a role that he knew disrespected Batman. Now, this might age absolutely horribly. Like, I'm four hours in. I've seen some of the scenes that you guys have seen because they were posted all over the internet. Um, I know why people are upset. And trust me, I'm upset too. I felt kind of depressed playing the game last night because I've been thinking about how all these stories, you know, nowadays, they seem to just kind of have this message of, like, your heroes can't save the day and inevitably, like, their moral code doesn't hold up under pressure. And it's frustrating to me because you can do that with things like Watchmen and do it really well, but it's starting to become an oversaturated thing. I understand why people are upset. That's probably the 50th time I've said that. And I'm going to wrap this video up so I don't get too rambly. But 
I just want more stories that are inspiring to people. You know, I want people to also treat each other with respect. Like I know I'm, I'm yelling at a brick wall. Like it's like the classic meme of the guy in front of the brick wall, like this, like yelling at it, like trying to explain something to it. Like nothing's going to change. Um, but this game's become not fun to talk about because the people who love it are very angry at the people who don't. And the people who are very upset about the treatment in the universe or upset about the direction are very angry at the people who want to play this game. And like modern politics or like modern religion or any of that stuff, it's just very tribal and not fun. Uh, the comments every time I bring this game up are extremely disrespectful towards me and other people. It's always just fight upon fight. And like so many of my mods have to mute people because they're just assholes. And I just think that that's frustrating to me. I don't want these stories to inspire that kind of anger in people. I want them to lift people up. And I want them to do what I think Kevin Conroy wanted his character to do, which was inspire people to be better people. That's what I worry about with this game as I play it, is that the further I get into it, the more it just feels like that's not the goal of the game. It feels like the goal of the game is like to subvert expectations and to like do make something the audience wasn't expecting. You can do that, but if that's your whole goal, like you just want to be M. Night Shyamalan the whole time, you're going to have a lot of misses too. And I think that people need to be a little more open-minded to each other in this discourse. Um, at the end of the day, what I say about this game won't change anything. What I say about the people talking about it won't change anything. But people ask me to, to kind of weigh in on it and to give my thoughts, and those are my thoughts. I have a hard time believing Kevin would purposely take a role that tarnishes the Batman character or that would ruin that character for people. He did know his health was declining. I also think it's frustrating that some people have weaponized his death um, as like a moral high ground. I don't like that. But at the same time, when Paul Walker passed in The Fast and the Furious, I talked about this before, they had to scramble to figure out how to respectfully send him off. And I guess for me, what I'm worried about with all of this is that it doesn't feel like many of these send-offs are respectful. And not from the villains, but from the writers. You know, as somebody who has made a lot of videos about Arkham, I understand being sick of Arkham at times. Like, there's a lot of times where, like, I will have a resentment, where I'll feel like, well, I want to talk about other stuff, and I feel like people only value me because of Batman, and when I'm playing this game, there's a lot of bits of the story that feel like the writers felt that way. Like the writers at Rocksteady and the people making the game felt like, well, if, I, if everybody only cares about Batman Arkham, let's shit on it. And I, I really hope that's not the case. I really hope going forward that some of the stuff coming out on Twitter, which for some reason is allowed to be posted there but not YouTube, I don't get why, um, about like people coming back about the Justice League coming back and this not being the end of their story. I hope that's true. But I'm not a spokesperson for WB, and I'm not a cheerleader for Rocksteady, and I totally understand why some people are so upset, don't want to buy the game, uh, don't even care about it, and are disregarding it. I hope that they find a way to like make this a respectful thing. Ah, geez, Jill was looking at me from around the corner. That scared me. In the future. Um, but right now, it just doesn't feel like that, and it's making me sad. Because the world is too dark and depressing and too sad. And there's just so much crap going on every day that I don't really need that in my stories. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, this, even though it was a little long, was much shorter than the previous video. Jill, what was it, 15 minutes? Uh, yeah, this is 18 minutes. Your previous video was like 26 minutes. So, hey, we, uh, we, we narrowed it down. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I do also have uh, JRPG, my new channel I started, um, where I'm covering like Dark Souls, Kingdom Hearts, stuff like that. I have a nose itch here. I'm just, I don't know. This... We also have a Fortnite code. DJAY123. If you're interested in supporting the channel. Um, I, I guess I'm just tired of like everything being like an argument and I'm tired of every story just kind of being like a downer. I really hope they, they write the ship on this. Um, because I want to love this universe. I want to trust things um, going forward. But like even the new DC universe with James Gunn, when I see him commenting about how they want to do more in the Arkham universe and this is what I'm seeing, like great gameplay, but almost a mean-spirited way to send heroes off, it makes me not trust anything. Like it makes me wonder like why did he sign off on, on the ideas around here clearly he saw it right like he had i know he's the film guy but like if he's like talking about how much he likes this 
stuff. Like, clearly he had to see it. So then it's just making me worried. I, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Have a fantastic day. As always, everybody, uh, stay shway.